I loved pirates as a kid. I had this fancy pastel dollhouse playset, and I played with it all the time. But most of the time, my main game was, My pirate ship toy set is going to raid the fancy dollhouse and kick out the owners of the dollhouse, and now the pirates live in the dollhouse because they're pirates! <laughs> I loved pirates in movies, pirates in books. I can't really describe what it was, but there's just something about a ragtag group of sailors living in a boat and causing problems that I, as a young, obedient child living in the Texas suburbs, just found so interesting and fun. Unfortunately, real-life pirates had their own set of problems. From what I understand, back then, living on a boat for months at a time kind of sucked, and pirates had a lot of health problems as a result of their style of living. One of the ones most folks are probably familiar with is scurvy, a vitamin C deficiency that pirates got because it was hard to bring fresh fruits and vegetables on months-long voyages at sea. Common symptoms include lethargy, irritability, bruising easily, and your gums swelling and sometimes having your teeth fall out, among other things. Which is very unpleasant, but back in the day it was apparently pretty common. So why did I just spend the first minute or so of this video talking about pirates and scurvy and whatever? Well, I mean... I kind of already spoiled it with the title of the video, but this is the story of how I contracted a pirate disease in college. And it happened around this time of year or two, so it feels fitting to discuss. So let's recap. But before we get into that, a real quick Hey Star, what you drawing segment. Uh, the art in the background of this video is actually a new seasonal print I just finished for Valentine's Day this year. The art features my VTuber avatar and mascot star Carmine dressed in a cute little maid outfit that's suitable for the cutesy season, and signed prints of this are now available in my shop. The link is in the description if you'd like to snag a copy for yourself. Anyway, on to the scurvy story. <laughs> so, I'm going to preface this by saying that, as you'll find out later, I never actually went to a doctor and got formally diagnosed with scurvy or anything. But saying, I got scurvy, is only three words, and it's way easier to say than, I had a combination of various nutritional shortages that caused a variety of weird and unpleasant symptoms extremely similar to the symptoms of scurvy as described by various medical websites. So for the sake of simplicity, I'm just gonna say that I got scurvy. People know what scurvy is. It's fine. Calm down. <laughs> Don't be pedantic in the comments, please. Or do. Drive that engagement, feed the algorithm, etc. <laughs> anyway, this story takes place during my junior year of college. During my freshman and sophomore years, I lived in dorms at my college that came with a meal plan, which meant that a few times a day I could go to the dining hall and get food. And the dorm dining hall had a full salad bar, among other things, so I was eating pretty beefed up salads almost every day, along with whatever else they were serving. However, in junior year, my friends and I all moved into apartment-style dorms. These dorms were full apartments, had their own kitchens, and didn't come with a meal plan. Which meant that we were expected to cook all our own food. To... varying degrees of success. My roommate and I didn't do anything too fancy for our day-to-day -day meals. We would make easy things like hamburger helper and spaghetti and stuff like that pretty frequently. And here's a thing about me, is that I really don't like cooking. I really don't. It's such a pain and the end result never feels like it's worth all the effort of buying ingredients and prepping the food and cooking the food and cleaning up afterwards and having to finish off the leftovers before they get all moldy and gross and I just... It's a pain and if I have the option to eat something fast and easy, I'll usually do that. Plus, I'm not like an imbecile or anything. If I have a recipe, I can do just fine with cooking, but I really struggle with food sometimes. Uh, here's a prescient example. Uh, one time when I was in college, around the time that this story took place, I tried to buy iceberg lettuce to make a salad with, and I didn't read the produce label, and I accidentally bought a head of cabbage instead. And I didn't want to waste it 
and I didn't know how to cook cabbage, so I just ate it raw with salad dressing anyway. Don't be like me. I'm... <laughs> Plus, at this point in my college career, my workload had really started to ramp up. Most of my classes were at the animation building at our school, which was a dark, windowless coffin of a building with multiple floors of rows upon rows of high-end computers with minimal lighting. Between spending several hours a week there for class and even more hours afterwards doing assignments and homework on the school computers, I was spending a lot of time staring at screens in the dark. And being so busy with schoolwork meant less time actually taking care of myself. Instead of cooking full meals, most of the time I was opting for easy snacks I could eat quickly before running out the door to class. Sometimes I even replaced lunch and dinner with granola bars or bagels I could keep in my backpack. Uh, it wasn't great. Anyway, the long and the short of it is, I didn't really enjoy cooking, I still don't, and I usually opted for food that was easy to prepare and kept me full over stuff that was more nutritionally balanced. And I was so busy with school, everything else started to take a back seat. And not long into my junior year, the consequences of my poor dietary decisions started to take their toll. About four weeks into junior year, midterms were approaching and I had a lot of work starting to pile up. I was spending most of my class days at the animation building, slaving away on 3D animation assignments and other classwork. In addition, I was also an officer for multiple clubs around the school, and I had a weekly updating webcomic to occupy most of my free time. And around this time, I started noticing that I was really tired, like, all the time. Despite my busy schedule, I still maintained a consistent sleep schedule and managed to get a good seven to eight hours of sleep every night. But for whatever reason, I just felt super sluggish constantly. I had always been the type of person to wake up super early even without an alarm, so this sudden constant tiredness was an unusual turn of events for me. I tried to combat it by taking naps between classes and sometimes even during class on accident, but would wake up feeling just as tired, if not more tired, than I had been before. And caffeinated drinks made me sick, so I couldn't rely on those to keep me awake. It got to a point where, between sleeping at night and taking naps every day, I was getting 8-12 to 12 hours of sleep per day, and still felt exhausted constantly which is something I had never dealt with and didn't know how to fix. I tried to power my way through it, thinking it was likely just caused by stress. I still went to class, club activities, hung out with my friends, and got all my classwork done, but for a few weeks I just felt like garbage all the time. And not long after the tiredness set in, a new symptom started showing up. Being so tired all the time, combined with staring at computers all day, had caused my eyes to have that slight, dry burn to them, just all the time. You know, that kind of tired burn you get when you feel like your eyes have just been open too long and they just kind of sting? Yeah, that. I was feeling that pretty much constantly. Again, I figured it was just part of being so tired because of how stressed I was. But then... My eyes started twitching, like uncontrollable eye spasms. They were small, and I don't think anyone besides me noticed them, but I could feel my eyelids twitch every now and again when I was sitting at the school computers. I would also sometimes get my eyes pulsing in time with my heartbeat. I'd feel my pulse in the back of my eyes, and they'd just get a little bit blurry and out of focus. It reminded me a bit of those weird ocular migraines I get sometimes, but it would only last a few minutes of on and off strobing blurriness. It was the weirdest thing I'd ever experienced. I think I may have had some hand twitchiness and vertigo as well, but it's been so long since all this happened I can't really remember super clearly. So naturally this started to freak me out, right? Like, between being tired all the time and my body suddenly starting to get spasmy for no reason, I was starting to get this bad feeling that something was really, really wrong with me. And I had no idea what it could be. 
I talked to my friends about it and they suggested going to a doctor, but I was going to a school a thousand miles away from home and I didn't know how to go about finding a doctor nearby. I kind of just stewed in this uncomfortable position for a couple of weeks, my tiredness and twitchiness gradually getting worse and worse. And then, at one point in class, I had grabbed a granola bar out of my bag to snack on during break and had a small epiphany. When was the last time I had eaten a fruit or a vegetable? And I sat there, and I thought about it for a long time, and I realized that I couldn't actually remember. <laughs> I had been living off of cereal, toast, granola bars, bagels at the breakfast place in the animation building, and hamburger helper for weeks at this point, and honest to god couldn't remember when the last time I had eaten any kind of healthy meal was. I remember just staring blankly at the wall and thinking, if I seriously gave myself scurvy, I am going to be so mad at myself. <laughs> so that night after class, uh, I walked over to the pharmacy down the road from our dorms, purchased a quart of orange juice, and chugged the entire thing in one evening as I was hanging out with my friends. And sure enough, the next morning, I felt immediately better. I woke up feeling genuinely rested for the first time in probably two months, and after a few days, my tremors and twitchiness stopped too. <sighs> And that was the day I learned the importance of vitamin C, because apparently, if you don't eat your fruits and vegetables, there are consequences, like making you feel like your dang eyeballs are gonna fall out of your skull, which is so fun. The aftermath of this story is that now, in addition to always having orange juice in my fridge, Every time I pop this story into a conversation as a fun, here's how stupid I was in college, icebreaker, people immediately volunteer to feed me afterwards. It has a 100% success rate. Even though the story happened over 10 years ago and I have since learned from my coming of age stupidity, and now I always keep orange juice in my fridge and a stash of veggies to snack on. Also, in a similar fashion to my Rukia story, now my friends and family love to tease me about scurvy and related things and they're constantly checking up on me to make sure that I've had my vegetables anytime I say that I am tired. My mom once sent me a video about how to make a drink that pirates drank because it was supposed to be good for combating scurvy and this is what I live with now. Because I was stupid in college, I have placed a curse on myself forever and I just have to live with this now. And now I realize that I have told this story to YouTube and people in my live streams and my comment section are gonna tease me about the time I got scurvy now. So that's great. Anyway, moral of the story is eat your vegetables and don't catch a pirate disease no matter how cool pirates are. This video has been sponsored by Vitamin C. Stay healthy, everybody. All right, YouTube, it's time for the outro and you and I need to have a conversation because the last story time video I uploaded went kind of viral and hit almost 400,000 views in like a couple of weeks. And I don't know how that happened, but it is absolutely wild. Thank you so much to all the new folks who've joined and subscribed and left nice comments on my videos. The positive feedback has been really encouraging and I want to thank you guys for all your support. Milo says thank you as well. Uh, because I want to try and keep the YouTube momentum going and because I have a lot of video ideas waiting in the wings, I'm going to try and post a video every week during the month of February. So next week will be my holiday Matsuri vlog, the week after that is another story time, then my Ikikon vlog, and then two more story times after that. I'm not like 100% sure I'm gonna be able to manage that, but that is the goal that I am aiming for, so fingers crossed.
Once more to reiterate, the art from this video is available now as a signed print in my store, so check the link in the description to snag a printed copy to decorate your space with some cute Valentine's Day themed goodness. <laughs> Stay healthy this winter, friends, don't catch scurvy, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.